Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In last lecture we are discussing about the diversity of B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte and what is the maximum number we can reach in uh, different diversity of di two different lymphocytes. Now, today or in this lecture actually we are going to talk about structural variation in the immunoglobulin constant region. Okay. So, and uh, later on we are going to talk about how this uh, isotype is switching because different constant region of immunoglobulin are known as isotype. right? So, any particular antigen if it is recognized by the hyper variable region or the variable region of antibody, its constant region may be IgG type, IgM type, IgA type, but the specificity towards the antigen is uh, specific. So, against any particular antigen what can happen? one antibody binding site can hold it, okay. but its constant region which is responsible for the effector function can be IgM or IgG, IgA, IgE. Right? So, different type of constant region is possible. So, today we are going to talk how this structural variation in the constant region is generated. Okay. So, this particular slide you already have seen the upper part right when we are discussing different type of antibody or antibody structure we showed you that IgM, IgG, IgD, IgE, IgA different. So, IgM, IgG, IgD, IgG, IgE, IgA varieties of, of these five different isotypes of antibody we have discussed its structural difference little bit also we will discuss. But Today, what we are going to tell about that how this constant region is uh, coming to a particular type of variable region. We have to remember that constant region is of antibody is only contributed by the heavy chain, right. So, if we see how this heavy chain is rearranged, then we can tell what can be the isotype of the antibody. So, if you see below just below this antigen antibody structure you see there is a series of same color code boxes, what these boxes this is basically the constant region gene segment. Okay. Now, this is the upper panel is mouse and lower panel is human I mean this is the human one. So, now if you see the mouse in and human both cases J H is there. So, what is there? before that or the 5 prime end of this gene this is the DNA strand. So, 5 prime of this JH we had D and before that we had V. So, after the J region we have different constant region. If you see here the constant region is designated as C and suffixed by one Greek letter. What are those Greek letter? If you see this mu delta gamma 3 gamma 1 gamma 2 B gamma 2 A epsilon and alpha. You can easily correlate, I mean if you see the name of the antibody gene like isotype IgM is coded by C mu, IgD coded by C delta, IgG is coded by uh, gamma and there are different subtypes if you see gamma 1, gamma 2 A, gamma 2 B and gamma 3. So, there are four different subtypes of IgG and then we have IgE and then I G A is coded by C alpha. So, what is happening after this V D J recombination, V D J recombination is over and after that it is giving the only variable region. So, after variable region constant region is coming, which constant region is going to come it depends I mean depending on that what isotype will be the final product is determined. Okay. So, 
V D J recombination in heavy chain, V D J recombination in heavy chain is common. After that, if mu comes, then it will be I G M. If delta, then I G D. If gamma, then I G G. If epsilon, then I G E. If alpha, then I G A. If you see the human genome and the arrangement of this constant domain, they are almost similar. Okay, but there is two alpha subtypes, alpha one and alpha two. Okay, there one you can see here that psi c epsilon. I don't know how many of you are aware of this psi uh, designa uh, designated gene. Psi actually psi before the genome. I mean before any gene segment of gene indicates it is a pseudo gene. Okay. There are many pseudo genes present in human genome. Pseudo gene actually the gene, I mean this is not related to here, but just for your information pseudo gene many of you may know already. Pseudo genes are the gene which does not express, but prediction I mean if you see their sequence it is a complete gene. The two possibility uh, immediate two possibilities you can find like why one particular gene is present in chromosome, but is not expressing because gene expression first thing you need it should be transcribed. So, for transcription you need a promoter right and if promoter is not there it is not going to transcribe that is also called pseudo gene because gene is there, but it is not transcribing that is why no protein. Another possibility is that even the promoter is there, but there is maybe a stop codon inside so that we will not get the complete protein product it will be truncated. So, final product will be incomplete protein or no protein. Okay. So, that is also may be the cause of pseudogene. So, here this psi c epsilon is pseudo otherwise all are functional gene okay. clear. So, this table actually is very I mean you do not have to remember do not be scared you do not have to remember all these figures. But this table if you go slowly I am not going to spend much time on it this is actually say saying that which is the heavy chain like I G G 1, I G 2, G 4, I G M, I G A 1, A 2, I G D and I G e. you can understand this is human one because I G A 1 and A 2 basically is all uh, subtypes of human not present in mouse and this is their molecular weight. I uh, I am going to tell uh, I mean molecular weight how you can uh, estimate that or if you want to do uh, verify that what I am telling or the written in the book is right or wrong then you can do some very simple experiment to check that. So, these are the molecular weight. So, normally what we say is the average molecular weight of I G G is 150 just to be uh, it is not exactly. So, I G G has different you see I G G 1 is 146, 2 is 146, I G G 3 is 165. So, average is uh, close to 150. So, I G G molecular weight is 150 kilo Dalton this is in kilo Dalton and if you see I G M which is huge, but if you go back I mean if you see the structure I G M only had one extra constant domain. So, one extra constant domain is contributing only 110 approximately 110 amino acids. So, these 110 amino acids will not contribute that much. So, why this is suddenly so high it is almost 5 times that we will see later okay. and I G is little more because it also has one extra constant domain. So, their serum level if you see that maximum serum level or at any time an adult in uh, if you check this uh, isolate the blood and purify the serum and in serum if you measure how much IgG is there then it is the maximum amount okay. and IgM is also good IgA is also not uh, I mean in between, but there are others are not as much okay. their half life is also given. So, IgG has the maximum half life. So, from this what we can predict is we can predict that most of the adaptive immunity what we are seeing or what effect we are enjoying actually the immune system that how they are protecting major player in antibody mediated immunity is played by IgG. That is why they are more in amount they are more in um, their half life is also more that means, uh, they stay in blood for longer time. Okay. So, IgG is one of the very important uh, antibody isotype which plays a major role in adaptive immunity mediated by 
um, antibody. And bottom part, if you see, bottom part has the effector function. Some of the effector function we already discussed, like optionization, neutralization, complement uh, activation. So you see this plus and minus, which indicate plus means it is helping in the say for example, classical pathway complement activation. Best performer of this activation is IgM, you see 4 plus and the number of plus in indicating how good it is or and negative means it does not take part in the complement activation. So, you can see only IgM and 3 of the IgG are mostly taken care of this complement activation, IgM is the best player and IgG 2 is the least I mean efficient player. Co alternative pathway complement activation that I mean this is you do not have to remember right now, but you learn when the complement uh, will teach complement system of immunity, then you will understand what is this alternative pathway only IgA 1 is involved. Same way if you go through this, then you can understand which antibody is doing what. And here is one thing which we did not discuss placental transport, which is very important because when uh, baby is uh, growing inside mother's womb, then mother's blood is actually protecting the baby inside the womb because uh, that time immune system is not ready, their antibody production, their exposure. So, any kind of protection of a baby inside the mother womb is protected or taken care by the antibody present in mother's blood. So, if antibody cannot cross the placental barrier, then it cannot help. So, not all antibodies are uh, crossing the placenta. So, there are few like IgG 1 and you can see from here right. So, and gradually you can uh, see what is happening. Here at the bottom one thing is written that reactivity with staphylococcal protein A, reactivity with staphylococcal protein A. Okay. I will come to that, uh, not exactly uh, in, the, in, uh, in relation to the infection, but we will uh, discuss or I will discuss what this protein A can do and how we use this protein A. Protein A actually the surface protein of Staphylococcus aureus, okay. it has a very good uh, property which is not good for health, but uh, the technologist or the uh, scientist develop some technique to purify the antibody that we will discuss sometime if time permits. So, this reactivity with the staphylococcal protein A is you see mostly the IgG are interacting with staphylococcal protein A. So, what it is actually doing this protein A is a surface protein of staphylococcus they have a specific property it can bind to the constant region of IgG. Okay constant region of IgG. So, by that they can eliminate the IgG to do its proper function. Okay, this is a defense mechanism from bacterial side. So, now we can see from this table bet most of the antibody present in our serum is IgG and staphylococcal antigen can clear them by binding them. Okay, so, IgG actually cannot do much to protect from staphylococcus. So, that property that means protein A binds to IgG is also exploited to purify the antibody that we will see if time permits. Okay. So, now different classes of immunoglobulins are distinguished by the structure of their heavy and constant region and this constant region confers the functional specialization of the antibody that I am just this is the summary of the just the last slide. So, different classes of immunoglobulins are distinguished distinguished by the structure of the heavy chain that we already have seen in last few slides and the constant region confer the functional specialization like uh, which one is going to do the complement activation, which one will do the optionization. Uh, the last table the bottom part is uh, actually uh, saying by this uh, statement. Now, IgM and IgD. Okay. IgM and IgD are derived from the same pre mRNA transcript and are both expressed on the surface of mature B cell. I am repeating again, though it is written, 
IgM and IgD are derived from the same pre mRNA, how it is possible. So, before going to go there, what I will do is what I am going to do is in B cell, if this is the B cell, before the antibody is secreted, what which form it is present in the surface? It present as a receptor, okay. it is present as a receptor and upon activation the same receptor are synthesized in different form and secreted. Okay. So, what is there in the cell? which form of the isotype is present as a receptor? Actually, they are mostly I G M okay. and they also have they also have I G D. Normally, normally I G D concentration in blood is very very low and they do not secrete. Okay. So, I G D actually take part in the initial signaling during the activation of B cell, this is B cell or B lymphocyte. So, act during the activation of B cell that means, when B cell is there receptor is there. So, this is the receptor in B cell and if antigen come it binds and which gives the signal to the B cell that okay, something you have to take care. And along with that signal T signal from T helper cell is also giving the signal to the same B cell. So, when two signals comes together that we discussed in the um, during basic concept uh, uh, of immunology in the first few lecture we discussed. So, in in B cell actually two type of receptors are there, two isotypes of receptors same specificity, specificity or antigen specificity of these two IgM and IgD both are same, but only their constant domain are different and both of them attached to the B cell as a receptor IgM and IgD both takes I mean uh, uh, interact with the antigen and gives the signal to B cell to proliferate and to convert transform to plasma cell for production of antibody along with the signal from T helper cells. So, how this IgM and IgD always come together it is uh, saying that IgM and IgD are IgM and IgD are derived from the same free RNA. Now, we will see what is happening how it is located. So, if you see I mean this is the structure actually what is happening do not be scared it is very simple. So, if you see the structure or the organization in the genome you see C mu and C delta is side by side C mu and C delta both in case of mouse as well as in case of human. We I mean I do not remember whether I told uh, previously in class or not, but most of the immune system what we are studying what we understood so far much of them or most of them are studied in mouse, because mouse immune system and human immune system are very very similar not exactly identical there are very um, uh, there are many places where there are different, but most of the cases they are very similar even in the gene organization also. Okay, but we cannot do all this thing in human, so mouse is very good model to study human immune system. You see here, I mean this case C mu and C delta organization in uh, mouse as well as C mu and C delta that means, IgM and IgD constant domain organization in this uh, human are exactly identical. So, what is happening? How the C mu and C delta always comes together that we will see. Okay. So, here if you see actually how this I mean if you just enlarge that C mu and C delta part how it will look C mu and C delta part V d j is already recombined then immediately after that this is the DNA. I told you once and I am reminding you again that as when there are two lines between these boxes that means DNA and when there is one line that is RNA okay, because of just in cartoon and also signifies the double strand and single strand. So, V d j is next to V d j is the C mu 
in previous slide it CMU was on only one box, but here actually this CH1, CH2, CH3 and CH4. So, there are four domain in CMU and this region in between is a hinge region, okay. but in other case, but here there is no hinge because in uh, IgM there is no hinge. So, this is CMU and there is a 1 P A 1, P 1 is what in eukaryotic system you know in eukaryotic system there is a in every mRNA there is a polyadenylation site that means poly A has been added in transcript in uh, after in the mRNA and the eukaryotic mRNA contains poly A tail at the 3 prime end. So, it needs a signal there is a site specific site in the genome also. So, after this C mu there is one poly A signal then immediately after that this is a C delta constant domain in C delta this is C H 1 this is C H 2 this is C H 3 this is C H 3 C H 1 C H 2 and C H 3 and these boxes actually talking about the hinge region. Okay. So, in previous slide what we have seen that C mu and C delta are next to each other, but this one box is not really one box this box is actually are several domain of C mu. So, now what happened during expression you first you need it need to have a transcription. So, when it is transcribed it transcribes the whole thing. So, V d j C mu and C delta transcribed together. Okay. So, this is that whole transcript V d j is common then C mu and C delta. In this after this transcription happened this is a precursor RNA you know precursor RNA undergoes splicing and after splicing the mature mRNA come and this mRNA is the responsible for what will be the protein sequence. So, this is one RNA sequence. Okay. This RNA sequence is having one V d j plus C mu segment and C delta segment. In one splicing what is happening V d j is there and then only C mu is spliced as there is already a poly A signal. So, what is the mRNA? mRNA have only C mu part which is all this internal intron type uh, intron are spliced out and they come together. So, product of this mRNA is actually IgM okay. and this is actually a very good example of alternate splicing. Okay. If you do not know what is alternate splicing please go and check. Uh, that what is alternate splicing, but in uh, uh, there are many genes are uh, going to uh, undergoing the alternate splicing and giving two different product of uh, uh, two different protein. So, in very brief alternate splicing is suppose there are two exons okay, let me change the color there are say x n 1, x n 2, x n 3. So, if this is the precursor RNA 1, 2, 3. So, in one splicing suppose x n 1 and x n 2 come together okay, 1 and 2. So, these two splice together and there are poly A. In other one if it is possible I am going this way what happen x n 2 and x n 1 join. So, as a result you will find x n 1 and x n 3. Okay. So, what is going to happen? So, there is only one mRNA. So, one protein is having 1 and 2 another protein is having 1 and 3. So, though there are one mRNA, but you can have two different protein of two different sequence from this is alternate splicing. So, here we are going to see the same we are going to see the same example I mean same uh, alternate splicing here. So, one mRNA uh, sorry one precursor RNA which have both C mu and C delta as well as V d j. So, if I consider the whole thing I mean there are so many introns and exons, but I am so to make my life easy say V d j is 1 
c mu is 2 and c delta is 3. Here one is what is happening 1 and 2 is combining and giving i g m. Okay. Another case what is happening 1 and 3 is coming 3 means c delta constant domain. So, 1 and 3 is making i g t. So, 1 m r n a. So, they are so close in the genome 1 promoter and 1 product. So, as a result if we if we go back if we go back to this slide. So, as a result in B cell as a receptor we are seeing I g m and I g 2 I g d is together okay. as a result I g d and I g m is coming. This is the alternate splicing product of single m r n a which is giving expression of I g m as well as I g d. Okay. Now, question I mean I hope it is clear now uh, I will explain the very similar thing. Now, I told several times that same receptor molecule the receptor molecule this receptor molecule is synthesized as a secretory protein upon activation. So, same receptor molecule secreted as antibody molecule upon activation of the B cell how this thing happen because receptor has a transmembrane domain and secreted protein antibody does not have that transmembrane domain otherwise that cannot be secreted. Here is again similar alternate splicing is happening. Now, we have to see more detail of that gene in the previous slide it was less detail. Now, if you see closer look of the IgM okay, what we will see we will see VDJ is there we will see C mu 1, C mu 2 that is C H 1, C H 2, C mu 1, C mu 2, C mu 3 and C mu 4 all are as usual before and then what was not there in the previous slide there is 1 S C, 1 M 1 and 1 M 2. Okay. S C, M 1 and M 2. S C is for secretion which is a tail, but not transmembrane and M 1 and M 2 is basically contributing the transmembrane domain of the receptor antibody molecule or B cell receptor molecule. So, here again alternate splicing is happening one product. So, this is DNA and one single mRNA is happening here you see there is one P A S and P A M this P A S and P A M both are polyadenylation signal. Okay, so, transcribe after transcription everything is coming okay, everything is here. Well, so, in one product what is happening V D J is coming all this C 1 uh, C mu 1 C mu 2 C mu 3 C mu 4 all are coming, okay, but this S C portion is not coming. So, it is not spliced instead of I mean in after that this M 1 and M 2 which is contributing the transmembrane domain of the B cell receptor are joining. So, all these are different exons. Okay. So, in first case this S C is not coming instead of that 2 YOLO which is the M 1 and M 2 that uh, the transmembrane domain is coming and you can see this uh, ULO is indicated as a transmembrane domain part which is a carboxy terminal. So, as a result what is happening this is the final mRNA. So, this product if converted to protein which will have a transmembrane domain and which will remain attached to the membrane clear, but the same transcript is happening upon activation in plasma cell. But splicing is happening differently. What splicing is happening here? Here is what is happening instead of M 1 and M 2 this S C portion which is secreted I, I G M portion which is not as big as this whole transmembrane domain, but they have a little tail okay. and this P A S which is the polyadenylation adenylation signal is coming. So, here what is happening same V D J 
same IgM constant domain, but instead of m 1 and m 2 this S c portion is coming. Okay. So, what is what is the take home message from here? One m r n a multiple actions out of that v d j and all constant domain region 1, 2, 3, 4 are always there. In one case secretory domain is there, in another case transmembrane domain is there. So, normally in B cell when it is expressing not activated not antigen is there or not converted to plasma cell, they are expressing the uh, gene along with the transmembrane domain. So, they cannot leave the cell and remain attached to the membrane or plasma membrane that is why it is the re uh, receptor and do is doing its job and this carboxy terminus or the cytoplasmic tail part is responsible for signaling. Okay. So, upon activation same gene everything is same, but just a slight change in the splicing make the same molecules to secretory protein that then it secretes to blood and doing its own job like neutralization, opsonization, complement activation and many other things clear. So, but if you see the variable region is not changing okay, that what we say that every B cell will produce a single type of antigen specificity because once one V D J recombined give a specific uh, specificity against a particular antigen that remain constant it is not changing and the same molecule or same V D J is I also act as receptor also secreting as antibody. So, there is no change. So, throughout the life cycle of the one B cell it may change by hyper mutation, but once it is changed this V D J will remain same. So, same molecule is going to be receptor as well as antibody molecule. Okay. So, this is uh, the uh, uh, reason why this particular uh, receptor molecule converted to antibody without changing it specificity. So, this is the mechanism or this is how it is happening. Okay. So, I will go quick two things one why IgM was so high molecular weight because IgM always stay as pentamer. So, five molecule if you see antibodies like one this is IgG but IgM always remain as five uh, together the pentamer that is why it is molecular weight is so high and this is a very common question how in pentamer IgM how this um, monomers are attached peptide bond or what no you see all are disulfide bond. Even the J chain which is connecting this J chain is also connected to monomers by disulfide bond. Similarly, IgA A remain as dimer same J chain as uh, and uh, disulfide bond IgA remain as dimer and IgM remain as pentamer. Okay. So, I am repeating again IgM as pentamer, IgA as dimer. So, if you remember what is the valency of antibody? Normal IgG valency is 2. What is the valency of IgM? So, IgM valency is 10 because each one can bind 2. So, valency of IgM is 10, valency of IgA is 4, other like IgG, Ig all have balance is 2. Okay? So, we will see in the next class. Thank you very much.